Hi friends, this is Anna with Scrapping, Stamping and Stuff. I'm here today with a video that I'm really excited about. You know that fall is my favorite. I absolutely love leaves and using them on my projects. And today we are going to talk about 10 different techniques that you can use on leaf cards. Now I'm doing this because fall is coming up and this is the season for leaves. But keep in mind that if you use different colors on the projects, different colors that I'm going to be using today, you can use leaves on your projects all year. Just change up the colors and you can use them for any of the seasons. So I first wanted to show you the stamp sets and coordinating products that I will be using for today's project. So first I have the Gather Together stamp set and the coordinating dies for this set. The Love of Leaves set along with the coordinating dies. The Loyal Leaves set, I love these leaves, I love all of these leaves, but this one does not have any coordinating punches or dies. Forever Fern is amazing. And the Beautiful Autumn set, which has the punches that coordinate with the acorn and the two leaves. So I'm not using all of the dies and punches today, but I just wanted to show you those so that you know what coordinates with those sets if you're interested in them. So the first technique I want to show you is the baby wipe ink pad technique. This technique has been around forever and I am amazed at how many people at my stamping events have not ever seen this. So I definitely wanted to bring this one in. So you need a baby a wet baby wipe folded. You can fold it in half, you can fold it in fourths if you want to, and you need some of your re-inkers. And what you're going to do is just start putting color in whatever pattern you want onto this baby wipe. The area that you cover with your color needs to be at least as large as the stamps you will be using to, to ink. So we'll cover this with color, then we're going to use this as our ink pad instead of a regular ink pad and we'll be able to stamp in multiple colors which is a really neat technique. So I have Pumpkin Pie, Mango Melody, this is Cajun Craze. You can put as much or as little ink as you want depending on how dark you want your colors to be. And then this is Cherry Cobbler. We'll get this all covered, and now is the fun part. So I am going to press this down. I don't really, with a when I'm inking a stamp normally, I kind of tap it around a few times. I don't really want to move it around much because when I move that around, it's going to blur these colors. So if you want the colors to stay separate, you don't really want to do that. If you want them to, well, that was, we're going to try this again since my, my, uh, stamp case was in the way here. There we go. So now there's a lot of white space in there and I don't really want it that way. So I'm going to go back and fill in a little bit more. See if we can fill in some of those spots. So this is where you can play around with it to get different effects. Between stamping, I do encourage you to clean your stamp off so that the color left on here doesn't bleed with what with the new color that you add to it. Stamp this one up. I don't know where. Here. There we go. I like that a little bit better. Now I'm going to use this one. So you can imagine if you switch up your colors, you can get just all kinds of neat looks with this technique. I am going to attempt to stamp back over this one. 
is where the stamparatus comes in handy. That was pretty good. Definitely want some scrap paper down for this. We are going to have a messy work surface when we get done today. And I did not clean this off this time. So as you can see, as I, as I keep stamping, those colors start to blur together a little bit. So that is technique number one, the baby wipe ink pad technique, which is an oldie but a goodie. Technique number two is to use stencils for sponging. And actually, there's a second way you can use the stencils. But what I've done, I took a piece of our window sheet and I die cut the leaf out. Now... I am going to use this as a stencil to sponge and you can either sponge around the outside of the actual die cut or you can sponge in the inside of the negative piece. So I am just going to use soft suede ink this time, but keep in mind you can switch up your colors. You could do this with multiple colors and get a really, really neat and different look with that. You do want to make sure you have it held in place pretty well. As you saw there, it moved on me a little bit. So you can add as many or as few leaves to these as you like. You can sponge some light, you can sponge some dark, you can get a lot of different effects with this. The other thing you can do with these is to use your Stampin' Spritzers, mix a little ink in with some water or some alcohol, and spritz over them. Now your stencil would need to be at least as big as your card piece to make sure you don't get your spritz out here. But that's another fun way to use these stencils to get pretty leaves on your projects. Okay, technique number three. I'm going to call this the keyhole technique. So what I did here, I die cut, I, I stamped a leaf on the front of the card. I die cut it out and then I folded the card base flat and I glued that same leaf right in there. So now that it stays attached to the inside of the card. So anytime you have some kind of really pretty die that you want to make the focal point of your card, this is a fun technique to use for that. Number four, we are going to do some more sponging. This time with a few different colors. And I've prepared my piece here. I stamped these leaves and acorns with Versa Mark ink, and then I used gold embossing powder and my heat tool to heat set that. You could just stamp these with regular ink if you wanted to, but I love using embossing, especially with leaves to get that pretty metallic look. So now that I have that done, I am just going to sponge color over the top. to add, add the color variation. Okay, so I have Crumb Cake, Cherry Cobbler, and Mary Merlot inks. And I am just going to start sponging these on in small patches. With sponging, you, depending on how you do this, you can get so many different looks because you can sponge it on really lightly like I'm doing. You can add it, continue sponging, and get it to be really dark if you want. The shapes you use for your color blocks can, can affect how all of this comes out. Here I'll add some crumb cake. Crumb cake's pretty light, so I can press a lot harder with that and not worry about it coming out real dark. It's 
also not going to matter if this blend if these colors blend together. And now let's add a little bit of cherry cobbler. When I go to pick my colors for fall projects, a lot of times I start to reach for the Cajun craze, the pumpkin pie, maybe a deep yellow like crushed curry, and some of the browns. But then sometimes I have to remind myself that you can use a lot of other colors for fall too, like like these right here, the Cherry Cobbler, the Mary Merlot. Okay, so there you can see a sponged background that, of course, this one is with the embossing, but you could just stamp your images on there and sponge over top. The next technique is similar to this sponging one, but we're going to add another step to it. This is called the Joseph's Coat Technique. The first thing I did was sponge the color all the way across the background without any stamping in place. Then I stamped the leaves from the Love of Leaves set. Hopefully you can see those. With Versamark ink, I sprinkled clear embossing powder over and I used my heat tool to heat set that. Now this is the amazing part of the Joseph's Coat Technique. Now you take some kind of dark color and you start sponging over this entire piece. And what you're going to see as this happens is we fill in all the space between the leaves with that dark color and all of those brighter colors behind the leaves, behind that clear embossing powder, all of those are still visible. This is such a neat technique. I did this years ago and it's been a while since I've mentioned it. So it was definitely time to bring this back. So you can keep going as, as long as you want to. If I want to, I could keep sponging and make this even darker, but I am going to leave it just like that. Once you're done, you do want to take a tissue or a paper towel or napkin or something and rub across here because the ink that is on the embossing powder, the, the embossed areas, that, that won't really dry. So you want to wipe that off and get that all cleaned off. So that is the Joseph's Coat technique. Next is... Let's see, we are on technique number six now. So we have five down and five more to go. Technique six is to use Stampin' Blends markers. I love our blends markers. These are so much fun to use and the results are just absolutely beautiful. So I have stamped my leaf with Memento Black ink. And if you haven't seen me use the blends or if you haven't used these them yourself, I really encourage you to try them. I am not a big coloring person, but once I started using these, I just sort of fell in love with it. And I have some more coloring projects coming up using these markers. So I am just gonna do this fairly quickly. I won't spend too much time on this, but I like to start with my lightest color, add in a little bit deeper. That's my light pumpkin pie. This is going to be my dark pumpkin pie. And I am not being very careful about this. So if you are a master of using the blends, you're probably watching along and you'll be horrified at my technique here. But I'm going to add in a little bit more dark. Then I'm going to go back and try to blend this all together. But with these blends, you can just get really pretty lifelike shading, especially if you spend a little bit of time on it. This one is going to be thrown together. But what I've been amazed with is how, even though when I first got them and did not have a clue what I was doing with them, how to use them or anything, I was just really impressed at how they blended and how beautiful they were, even though I didn't really know what I was doing.
So if you didn't realize this, I started with my light, I went to my dark, and now I've moved progressively back to my lightest color. And this one is Daffodil Delight. Okay, so I'll leave this. As this dries, it is going to change a little bit, but you saw how I added those different colors and now they have almost all blended together. And as this sits, it's going to blend even a little bit more. So blends are a really fun technique to use with leaves on your projects. Technique number seven is a stained glass technique. And I'm going to use my blends markers again, but this time I'm only using one. So I have a piece of our window sheet here. I stamped on it using Stazon ink. And that is important. Stazon is the only ink that's going to work with these window sheets and actually dry and stay permanent on, on there. Then, whichever side you stamp on, you need to flip it over and color on the other side with your alcohol markers. Hopefully I have the right side here. I believe I do. Because if I don't have the right side, my ink for my marker is going to dissolve that black ink that I stamped with. So you can color on the opposite side. Keep in mind, you can't really blend using the blends markers on your window sheets. You could add different colors if you want to, but they're not really going to blend because the ink doesn't really soak in on here. And it just doesn't work the same as it does on paper. So I got too much ink on there. It is wanting to bleed. Let me try that again real quick. I am going to just put a little bit this time and let it dry. So I call this the stained glass technique. Imagine this technique if you were doing color blocking onto different parts of a leaf or if you have some kind of stained glass window stamp. There's a lot of different stamps you can use this with and get some really pretty techniques, really pretty results. So this may need a minute to dry, but I want to show you how I would use this. I have die cut a hole out of the front of a card. I would lay this over the top here, and then I die cut another piece to put on top. And this is how it would all go together, okay? So that is the stained glass technique. Number eight. We cannot talk about leaves without using some water painters. I have two colors of ink here, just jade and sp shaded spruce. And I need to remember to get some ink on the lid of my pads because that is what I'm going to be using. If you don't like to get your pads messy inside by squeezing like this and opening them up, Remember, you can always take a block and just press that onto your pad and get some ink right here to use. So I have used watercolor paper. You can use regular paper. I also chose to emboss this. If you are not embossing, you may want to use Stazon ink. The Memento black ink can bleed. Sometimes I use it with my aqua painters and don't have any problems but you might have issues, so you may want to use your stays on. So I am just going to start picking up ink and start coloring. And the reason I chose the watercolor paper on this is because the color just moves around so much more, okay? And actually, that dark color soaked in more than I wanted it to right there. So if you color water over the whole thing, then you can go back and add more, add some darker color in the places you want it. And that kind of helps, helps keep too much from soaking in all at once. So on this one, I decided to use not fall colors just to show you that we can do this with other colors as well. So this is the jade. Now I'm going to pick up some of the spruce and I forgot to paint it with water. So let's paint with water first. A lot of the area on these particular leaves is covered in that embossing. So this is going to turn out a little bit different than if you have a big open 
a big open leaf that you can color the entire thing in. So with the aqua painters, it's fun to add that shading. So I am attempting to add more color down at the base and then blend that out to a lighter color up towards the edge. So you can mix lots of different colors. I could mix purples and reds and yellows and greens on one leaf if I wanted to. I just decided to try the greens on this one. With your water painters, if you ever find that they dry out and you don't have as much water as you want, just squeeze. I have a kind of a constant pressure on here where it says push that is just helping that water come out continually. so that I always have a little bit of water coming out. Okay, so some because of all this embossing, some of the water was beating up on top, but if I let that sit for a minute, it will soak in. So that is a very cool technique. I love that with that embossing. Okay, we have reached technique number nine, and the last two are going to be similar to each other. They're both going to use a spritzer, and what we spritz is what's going to be different between the two techniques. So I'm going to use this really pretty fern stamp, and on this first one, I am going to ink my stamp and I'm going to spritz the stamp itself. So here is my spritzer and I am going to spritz it once. Let's go with another time. You can spritz more or less depending on how you want this to look. And I spritzed more than I would have desired on that one. So I'm going to dry this off. Here is my chamois. We're going to try that again. And as we go through here, I'll, I'll do a couple so you can see the different looks. Okay, so that was like a spritz and a half. That's more of the look I was going for. This time I'll see if I can spritz it even less than that. If you back off with your spritzer, you won't get quite as much. This one... There we go, okay? That is the look I really like to get with the spritzer. So I just like that it blurs together a little bit. I know most of the time that is not the look we are going for, but especially with natural things. My, my daughter did this the other day with some snowflakes and it was just absolutely beautiful. So we'll do a little bit more again. And that's kind of fun if you if you vary how much of the water you're adding across your project, then you can get a different look so that it's not all the same. Sometimes you spritz in the wrong direction, so just keep your table clear and have some something protecting your workspace. Here we'll do another another juicy one. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good idea. And look how look how much of a watercolor look that is that looks like over here where we got quite a bit of water. So there is the one spritzing technique. And let's do the other one. So I just used Misty Moonlight on that one. On this last one, this is technique number 10. I'm going to use terracotta tile ink. So I'll make sure my stamp is good and clean. And on this one, we are going to spritz the background of the card. So I'm going to spritz this all over. Again, how much you spritz is going to affect how much your color bleeds. Now I am just going to stamp these ferns all over. And this is actually something 
my daughter, I'm going to say that my daughter invented this technique. She was crafting away one day while I was working on something here at my table. And at some point I got concerned, like, what in the world are you doing with all that stuff, child? And this is what she was doing. She was spritzing and then she was stamping and it turned out very cool. So... I'm sure somebody else has done this before, but my daughter is the one that inspired it and invented it in my little world of crafting. If your water bows up like this, you can tape it down with washi tape before you start to keep that from happening. And white space on the very corners when I do techniques like this bugs me so I want to make sure I don't have white spots and I just love that I think that's really cool how it starts to bleed together a little bit so there you have it are 10 techniques I'm going to bring these back in real fast so you can look at all of them we had one spritzing technique we had the other spritzing technique using the Stampin' Blends, the Joseph's Coat, the Stained Glass, Sponging, the Keyhole Card, Sponging with the Stencils that we made the die cuts with, and the Baby Wipe Ink Pad Technique. So I would really encourage you to try out one of these techniques. All 10 of them may be overwhelming, but try out one or two or three and I'd love to see your results. So have a wonderful day. You can get more ideas and inspiration on my blog at scrappingstampingandstuff.com, and I hope to see you again next time.